Shein is a fast fashion company with a pretty bad reputation, but can you make better versions of these cheaply made, cheaply sold items? Can you sew it? You'll be able to after this video. I have a few things from Shein that I got before I really knew how bad they were, but I actually really like these tops. So that's what we're making today, and the first step is going to be using them to create a pattern. I've got a couple options. I could cut the top apart, transfer that to paper, and boom, pattern. I could also do tracing paper and boom, pattern, but I'm gonna do it digitally because I'm too lazy for all of that. So I took a picture of the front and back, put that into Illustrator, scaled it to the actual size, and then I just traced around the shapes. The only ones I need are this little triangle, the band in the front, and the whole back. And then I also grabbed a measurement for the straps. That now just needs seam allowance, and boom, pattern. So now let's talk about the fabrics. So I wanted to find a fabric that was kind of similar to this, so something soft and kind of stretchy. So what I did was I looked at the fabric content tag, and I wasn't able to find something with that exact fiber content, but I did find this. This is heavy interlock from Big Z Fabrics. And then I also bought sweater rib knit. And this is also nice and soft and stretchy. Oh, and I also grabbed a t-shirt because I figured it would be kind of fun to try to upcycle something. But the other thing I'm gonna do today is finally over explain the basics of sewing, which starts not with your machine, but with your most important sewing tool, your scissors. They do not need to be this big, this is a joke. But one of the big mistakes I made when I first started sewing was just using any old pair of scissors. And you don't want just any pair of scissors, but you especially don't want an old pair of scissors because the number one, the golden, the, the biggest rule in sewing is you never cut anything but fabric with your fabric scissors. So if you have an old pair of scissors that you've used to cut anything else, they're going to be very dull. This is me cutting cotton with an old pair of craft scissors and they do this sh And this is an actual pair of sewing scissors that's two years old and I've actually never gotten them sharpened and they still work great. But once you start cutting that fabric, it's gonna start fraying, but you have a couple ways to deal with it. Now, if you look at the inside of these tops, you'll see what's called an overlock or an overcast stitch. And these things are made with a serger. This is like the professional level, okay? A serger is a machine with multiple needles and multiple spools of thread and a knife. It does something called an overcast or an overlock stitch. It also cuts the fabric for you while you're doing it. And that keeps it from fraying forever and ever. Now, sergers are a couple hundred dollars. So if you're just starting out, you probably don't have one. But what you can do is on your regular sewing machine, you can use a zigzag stitch and you just go into it, off the edge, into it, off the edge, and it kind of gives you something similar just without the knife. But if you don't have time for all that and you want something incredibly easy, your actual best option just starting out is actually another pair of scissors. These are pinking shears, and these are pairs of scissors that have a little zigzag pattern cut into them. And what that does is it helps all the little fibers from fraying away. I'm gonna do one of these tops in each of these ways, so you can see the comparison, but actually for a lot of this, I'm not even gonna do anything because it's a knit and a lot of knits don't fray. That's not a very professional way to do it, but it's for me and I don't care. So when I cut up the first shirt, I did something kind of dumb and I actually cut the finished bottom off thinking, oh, I'll use it as the strap, but then it wasn't long enough. And I was like, Sarah, you're so stupid. If you cut the bottom with the bottom pieces, then you don't have to finish the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna get a little bit of Sailor Moon's foot but that's fine. This is like one of those like slim cut t-shirts. So it's a medium, but it's about the same size as like a regular small t-shirt, which is what the other one was. And I figure if I can get this out of a shirt that fits me, you can get it out of a shirt that fits you, no matter what shape you are, as long as you have a shirt that already fit you, since this uses a lot less fabric than a t-shirt. I am gonna have a little seam in the front now though, but that's fine. And then for these, so there's nothing on the back of this shirt, so all I really need to do is put this in a place where I'll get as much of the design as I want because then the other side will just be black. So we're gonna get two pieces out of this and one will be with Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask and the other one will just be black. Now that I have all my pieces cut out and prepped, we are ready to start sewing. But first, I wanna show you how a sewing machine makes a stitch. Okay, <laughs> so I have this little contraption set up, right? And so if you're totally new to sewing, you might not know that your sewing machine actually does a stitch with two threads. There's the top thread 
and the bottom thread, and we call the bottom thread the bobbin. But the way this works, right, is the top thread goes in, right, and then on the bottom, what the sewing machine does is it pulls out a loop. And what the sewing machine is doing is it's creating a loop around the bobbin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bobbin thread and I'm gonna stick it through there. And so now it's going like that. And then what the sewing machine does is it raises the needle. Oop, it's not supposed to do that. Which pulls the bobbin thread up to the fabric. So then if you do that again, needle goes through, a loop gets pulled out, the bobbin goes through the loop, and then the needle comes back up. So then if you keep doing that, you get stitches. Obviously really hard to do by hand, but luckily for us, the sewing machine does all of that for us. So all we have to do is make sure the thread is going in the right place. So, but first, I'm very excited to tell you that we got our first sponsorship. Thank you so much to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Are you running around on somewhat shady websites looking for cosplay supplies? Well, a VPN can protect you from anybody trying to steal your data. And Atlas VPN has the best deal on the market. With its huge deal right now, you can get a three year subscription for just $1.99 a month and a 30 day money back guarantee. You can find all the cosplay supplies you need on any website because Atlas VPN stops ads in malware. Malware? Malware. And with your one subscription of $1.99 a month for three years and a 30 day money back guarantee, you get unlimited device protection. So you can protect your computer at home, your phone when you're at a con. And with a VPN, you can trick your internet into thinking you're in a different country, which means you can unlock some content on streaming services. So if you're like me and you paid for WoW Presents Plus thinking that you'd get every season of RuPaul's Drag Race ever and then realized that you didn't, well now with a click of a button, you can tell it you're in the UK and bam, OG Drag Race right there. And save some coins when you're planning your next trip to a con, because with a VPN, you get the best deals on airlines, hotels, and more. Use the link in the description to get Atlas VPN for $1.99 a month for three years with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And sincerely thank you to Atlas VPN for being my very first sponsor. This is how you thread the top thread. You put your thread in the thingy and you put a little hat on it. Hats to keep it from twisting around this thing. Probably gonna be a little guide on the top. Every machine is different. And then you're gonna get to these little crevice cracky thingies. And what's in these crevice cracky thingies is the tension mechanisms. And what those are gonna do is make sure the thread is sitting at the right tension to be able to do the loopy thing. So then when we get to this one, which on my machine is labeled number four, what it's actually going to get hooked onto right now is the take up lever. And what this does is it creates the slack that lets the bobbin create a loop with the thread. So we're gonna make sure we get around that guy and then we're gonna go down. And down here, there's usually one more guide right above the needle and then you just thread your needle. I guess I just did that laying on the table because I set this up so I could film it like an idiot. Uh, anyway, then you just thread your needle and the top thread is done and the bobbin is actually much simpler. So let me move this so I can stop looking stupid and laying on my table. So your bobbin's going to be in a little casing like this. So you'll probably have a little plate that you have to take off. You pop it in there and there might even be a little picture on the machine on how to do it. But you just make sure it's getting into its little guides. And your bobbin is threaded, but there is one more thing we gotta do. We've gotta sort of start out the loopy thing manually. Now some machines do this for you, but a lot of them don't. And the way you do that is you bring your hand wheel down. If you watch really closely, you can see that bobbin thread go around and then you can grab like some scissors or something. And if you just do this, you'll get your bobbin thread coming out of the top. And that's what you want. You want your bobbin thread coming out right here on the foot plate thingy. So once they're like that, we're ready to sew. Except not really, because first we need to use our other really important sewing tool, our iron. On these, they used bias tape and I'll get to that, I swear to God. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold them over twice and to make that look nice, I need to press them. Now, when we use our iron in sewing, we call it pressing because Ironing is for getting out wrinkles, but pressing is for manipulating the fabric. So if I take my two pieces and I fold them over and I press them once, 
I fold them over and I press them again, I'm gonna get a nice folded over edge before I even sew it down, which means when I do go to sew it down, it's gonna come out a lot nicer. The other thing we do with pressing is we press our seams and I'll get to that when this gets sewn together. I needed to do this right now because these are in like a little wrap top style, I'm not gonna be able to get into that corner once they go into the top. So now we're gonna actually get to sewing. So sewing on the machine, it's actually really simple. Uh, you've seen me do it a thousand billion times. All I'm doing is putting it into the machine. You can lift up your presser foot to get it in there and then pull your lever down to put your presser foot down. Make sure your needle's nice and lined up with that edge. And I'm just gonna sew. Another thing you should do is a back stitch, which you do by hitting the reverse button and you go back and forth a couple stitches and that just makes a little knot so it won't unravel. Some fancier machines do this for you but most machines don't. So with stretch fabrics, one of the things that can happen is because the fibers are stretchy, if a regular needle pierces through them, it can take the fiber with it down to the bobbin, which prevents our loopy doopy thing from happening. But a ballpoint needle is more rounded at the top, so it can go around the fibers instead of piercing through them, meaning the loopy doopy thing doesn't get messed up. Anyway, so now that these are prepped, we can start putting the top together, so. This goes together kind of interestingly, but it's not hard to understand. So the way we get the little wrap toppy thing in the front is I have my little front band. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these pieces, I'm gonna put them right sides together. Now this is where it can get a little confusing because this fabric in particular does not have a right or a wrong side, but we have created a wrong side by having this finished edge already done. So I wanna take our right side and I wanna put it right sides together with this piece. And I'm gonna take this one I'm gonna put it right sides together and I'm gonna make sure that these little corners get pinned in. And now we can sew these three pieces together by sewing a line right through here. But because this is going on my body right here, it's gonna get some stretch. But if we did a straight stitch like I showed you first, if you pull on that, it's gonna snap. However, if you use a zigzag stitch, a lightning stitch or a stretch stitch. Because they're all going side to side in that zigzag pattern, they can stretch with the fabric. And a stretch stitch is one of those kinds of stitches that you really only see on fancier machines. So my brother machine here only has a zigzag stitch and a lightning stitch, but this one has a stretch stitch. I'm gonna use this machine because it's nicer. And frankly, this machine handles stretch fabrics better than that one. But once we get the stitch in there, we can open that up and you can see we have the front of our little wrap top. And then the next step is real simple. I just gotta take the back and put it right sides together with the front. And I can just do a straight stitch down that. And then the back's attached. Okay, I just clipped it to my bra strap so I could see, but it's really cute. It fits really well. It's nice and soft still. It's a little see-through, but I don't care. But now all I gotta do is do the straps and finish the bottom. I'm gonna do both of those with bias tape. So finally, I'm gonna explain bias tape. So bias tape is a strip of fabric that was cut on the bias and then was folded into one of these configurations. If it's folded once, it's single fold bias tape. If it's folded twice, it's double fold bias tape. Bias in sewing means the same thing that it does in K-pop in that it is your favorite one. Well, it's my favorite one, I'm kidding. It actually means an angle. Anyway, the way bias tape is made is that you take your fabric and you fold it on a 45 degree angle and you cut a strip and then you feed that through something called a bias tape maker, or you just fold it with sheer willpower and it comes out looking like this. What is special about the bias is that because it's where the fibers are crisscrossing over, it gives the bias a little bit of stretch. The other thing you get with bias tape is you get more strength. So if something is rubbing up against this, if it's cut on the grain or the cross grain, you're rubbing up against a single thread. If it's on the bias, you're rubbing up against lots and lots of threads, which means it's gonna be stronger in the long run, which makes it really great for things that get a lot of wear and tear, like straps. Now, I'm gonna be lazy with these tops and just use pre-made bias tape, but like I said, you can make it yourself if you want it to match. So the way I'm installing these straps is a little weird, but stay with me, because the first thing I need to do is measure using the little guide I made myself earlier in Illustrator. So for this strap in particular, I'm gonna start at this mark and I'm gonna put the bias tape on the top and I'm gonna unfold it on the right side, so on the outside, and I'm gonna place that mark right here. So now this will become the strap. And I'm gonna pin that to the top with this lining up with the edge. 
So I'm gonna do that all the way across the back of the top. So now that I'm at this end, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this side and use this strap that I already cut to measure it, and I'm gonna cut it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew the bias tape on with a straight stitch, making sure that I stay within this first crease line. So you want that stitch to go right about here. Now you should have something that looks like this. There are a couple different ways to finish bias tape. You can do it by hand on the back. You can do a ladder stitch on the back and have it be completely invisible. You can do a stitch in the ditch, which is where you do a straight stitch right here where it meets it. So it's basically invisible. Or you can be lazy and just do a straight stitch right on top of it, which is not really how you're supposed to use it. If you're trying to get into competing and cosplay, don't do this to your bias tape. But uh, since this is just something for me to wear, I'm just gonna do it that way. I'm just gonna do it the lazy way and I'm just gonna run a straight stitch across the entire thing, including the entire length of the strap part. So now to finish this, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my two strappies and I'm gonna pin them to the back side. And yeah, I'm just gonna eyeball this. Not even gonna bother measuring it. And I'm just gonna sew these down by doing like a little rectangle right here and the straps will be on. And then all we gotta do is this bottom thing. On these tops, these are finished with, I don't actually know what you call this. These are made with a special kind of machine. I believe it is a special kind of serger. Okay, so I had to ask my Discord about this because I could not remember what it's called and I could not find it on Google without the name. Google tried to tell me it was inseam and that is not what an inseam is. Anyway, it's called a cover stitch and it is done by a special kind of serger called a cover stitch machine. But the stitch is really special because while it looks like a set of straight stitches, it's actually a really complicated stitch that has a ton of stretch to it. And I don't have anything like that. So I have a couple options. I could serge the bottom and fold it up once. I could fold it up twice, uh, but I'm just gonna finish it in bias tape on the bottom because I think it's just gonna look nice to have like the white straps with like the white stripe on the bottom. So I'm gonna do that. But then I realized again that I am being stupid because if I just cut the bottom pieces twice the size as they're supposed to be and fold them up, I can put the fold into the seam and now we have a fully lined bottom that I don't have to do any kind of hem to. And that was the cleanest one I got. But here's all the tops I made. I got quite a few and my favorite is actually the t-shirt ones just cause I really like having the design on one side. Also, don't worry, the Shein tops are not going to the landfill. I will wear them until they are full of holes and then patch up the holes like I do the rest of the clothing that I wear. Now the question is, is my handmade top better than this factory made Shein top? No, it's not. Because the fact is, while this was made in a factory, it was still handmade. The way clothing is still made is still by people. Stuff made in a factory just has access to better equipment. These are probably all made on industrial jukey machines and fancy sergers by people who are not getting paid anything. So no, I cannot make better versions of Shein tops, but I can make handmade versions of Shein tops for myself to wear so that they don't get my money. Um, also, holy f when I'm filming this, it is currently December 31st. It was about March, I wrote in the back of my planner, goal for the year, hit 10K on YouTube. It is December 31st, and we are about to hit 50,000 subscribers. And I wanna give a big thank you to the people that have been here for a year and a half that I've been doing this. Y'all's comments were what kept me doing this because let's be real, this takes a lot of work, but the best part of this year on this channel has been getting to see all of the amazing projects that y'all have created. From getting to see a hat at Dragon Con, to all the corsets that were born, to all the jellyfish, I cannot wait to see what we create in 2023. If you wanna support the channel, you can check out my Patreon, but if you're just watching, liking, commenting, or subscribing, you're supporting the channel too, so thank you. Bye. Oh. Do you wanna know what my next project is?
Yeah, I'm doing this bit again. Um, it's not Miku. It's not Genshin. But it is still strawberries. Thank you to the patrons. Alyssa, Stephanie, Katie, Experimental Blue, Tobias, Shellman, Alice, Lena Isostra, Haley, Evandaria, Samantha, Faybound, Beffer, Hog, Adriana, again, Amber, Kim, Fennec, Emma, Blockity DJ, Meredith, Taylor, Sarah, Kira Draws, Hal Bones, J Song 95, Bianca, Lunar, Gaia, Lula Rush Cosplay, Dilo's Fluffy Hair, Marcy, So Into Music, Amelia, Julian, Cam, Zen, Pin, Snip, and Claire.